I'm Christine. For those of you do, uh, who don't know me, um, I was raised in a Baptist church in a Christian home. Thanks to the faithfulness of my mom, um, and despite the great difficulty and struggle at times, she taught us the things of God and um, brought us to church, dragged us to church at times. Um, so the, the assurance of my faith, I wasn't ignorant to the word of God because of uh, faithfulness teaching on my mom. Um, I knew who Jesus was, and I knew who I was as a sinner. And the assurance of my faith was based on this knowledge uh, of the work that Jesus did on the cross combined with sporadic devotions and, you know, um, several heartfelt prayers asking for forgiveness of my sins. Um, but every other observable action in my life was in complete opposition with my profession. I lived in this manner, darkened with sin and deceit, ignorant of my condition before God, completely alienated from Him, all the while professing His name. This false way of living became so routine that I was honestly deceived into thinking I was right to stand before God. Um, it's clear to me now the great measure of hypocrisy littered in every contradictory word and action in my life. But before God opened my eyes, I was unable to see my wicked deception. It was the end of May, spring semester at UCF this year, when Edgar and Fredo politely approached me, um, clipboards and Bibles in hand, asking me to go through a survey. Um, and it was really the sovereignty of God that, that they even were there, and I was there at that time, and that I decided to go through it with them. Um, as we continued through the law, my pride in answering the questions correctly and striving to maintain the front of my facade prohibited me from even taking a second to um, acknowledge the disconnect between my words and my actions. Um, so, nearing the end of the survey, um, I'm sorry, yeah, I was like going through the survey, I was thinking, like, this, this doesn't apply to me because Jesus died on the cross for my sins, so um, I'm forgiven. Nearing the end of the survey, though, um, I was filled with haughty content with the survey, the way the survey went and my ability to get through it, despite my neglect of the church and the things of God. Um, I'm not sure if Fredo and Edgar were, what they were thinking about my responses or if I had deceived them. Um, but despite that, they, they continued with the survey, taking me through Matthew 5. As we went through each one, I was asked to rhetorically, rhetorically to answer um, whether these characteristics were evident in my current walk. With each careful explanation of these vital signs that are mandatory in the Christian's life, um, my dead, blind eyes were slowly being pried open, revealing the absolute wickedness and filth and blasphemous hypocrisy that I just spewed out of my mouth during the survey. How could I profess these things with such boldness and confidence when every single aspect of my life was absolutely void of any sign of true conversion or godliness? At this point of the conversation, my mouth was completely shut. Each revelation of the next lacking quality was like the piercing stab to a vital organ. And at the end of the passage, I was a lifeless body with nothing to offer. Everything I had assured in the sin had dissipated into nothingness within just those ten verses that we went through. Yes, Jesus Christ did do an amazing, merciful, and selfless act on the cross, but he didn't die for all those who, who profess Lord, Lord. He didn't die for those who just knew the facts like I did and had biblical knowledge. He died for those who would give up their life, submit their complete will, and become a slave to the rightful master and creator, the true and living God. Coming to this realization by the grace of God, I have been made a, a new creation in Him. I have been granted a new heart, given the eyes to see, ears to hear, and the desire to obey. These things are not humanly possible, and my attempts at repentance and devotion to the Word of God prove futile time and time again, completely impossible without the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. I am a changed person inwardly and outwardly, and by the power of God, sin and death no longer have authority over me. I'm no longer under the bondage of sin, living as an enemy of God, but now as an adopted child of the majestic king. The life taking, uh, I'm sorry. So I am eternally grateful of the work the Lord has done in me and for the precious gift of his son's blood. I'm no longer deceived in deceiving others as well, um, but recognize my salvation did not come free. It took the innocent blood of Jesus, and just as essential, it requires the laying down of my own life and my own will, um, to surrender uh, my will to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I want this account of my testimony and the evidences of my walk to testify to my commitment before the Lord, as well as a testament to the miraculous and abundant, abundantly gracious work the Lord has done in my heart and continues to do in my life.